Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to do more improvements on the app and add a few more things. Like right now, we don't have any sort of user accounts and we don't have any booking section for each home. So we're gonna work on adding that and then also setting up Stripe so that we can accept payments and then also pay out to the owners of the houses. This is gonna be a really interesting video and let's get right into it. So the first thing that we need to add really is the user accounts. So right now we don't have any way of like associating this house with an owner and the owner like has to have all their information. And also that would be good to have, like to show the owner down at the bottom maybe and show like their name and about them and some things like that. So let's get started on adding user accounts to our app. So for users, I think I'm going to just use the standard device gem, which is a gem for adding users and authentication, and it makes everything super simple. So to add the device gem, I'm just going to go into the console and then type in bundle add device. And bundle add just adds the gem to the gem file and it also runs the bundle install. So now that we have that, we have device. The next step to do is to run Rails G device colon install, which is the installer for device that sets up a few things in the app and then it makes sure that we have everything ready to go, it creates the config file and also like this local file. And we also get a few next steps like setting the root and also adding some flash messages. So those are just like the alerts that would pop up whenever you do something on an app. So we can go ahead and add in these flash messages. And then the next step would be to generate the device views. But I'm actually going to use my own gem for this. I'm going to add, I'm going to do bundle add tailwind device, which is a gem I made in a previous video, just to style all of the sign in pages using tailwind CSS. So it makes everything look a little bit better right off the bat. And then now that I have tailwind device, just run a Rails G tailwind underscore device on install. Or, or no, <laughs> Rails G tailwind device colon views. I haven't used this in a second. Okay, there we go. Now we get the views. We can restart the server. Although we don't have the user model, so I forgot to generate that. Let's go back into console and let's do a Rails G device user. Just like that, we can generate the user and then let's migrate the database because it did create a database migration. And after that, we are good to go. Although maybe we should add in those flash alerts. So to do that, let's just open up the code in Visual Studio. We need to get this app ready. All right, and then we can go over to the app views layouts. And inside of the application file, this is where we'd render the uh, alerts so that they show up on every page. So what I'll do is I'll just render a partial at the top of the body. I'll render layout slash alerts. And then we can create a alerts partial inside the layouts folder. So to do that, just create a new file and name it underscore alerts.html. And doing it with the underscore just makes it into a partial so we can re-render it on multiple pages. Then I'll paste in the code, which is just simply a P with the notice. So this is the part that's important. We're displaying the notice and we're displaying the alert, which we get from Rails whenever we like redirect from the controller if there was an alert or a success message. Or like an alert or a notice message basically, but notices usually are for successful form submissions. All right, so now that we have that, we actually can go to users slash sign in we have a sign-in page and we also have a sign-up page. So from here, we could integrate this a little bit more finely and add in a sign-in button somewhere. So maybe a good idea is to add a nav bar because we don't have a nav bar yet. So we can just do a really simple nav bar at the top and then we can put the sign-in link up there. So to add a nav bar, we're gonna go into the views folder again and in the layouts. So right where we rendered our alerts partial, I'm actually going to put the nav bar right on top. So I'll render layout slash 
navbar. This is going to be a new partial that I'm going to create. So we'll just create a file inside of the layouts folder called underscore navbar.html.erb. And then inside of here, we'll put all of our code for our navbar. So I'm just going to add a simple div, give it a fixed height that's not like too big. And then inside of here, the first thing I'll do is add a link to home. And this will just go to slash route, which a slash like this just means it's going to go to the main route. It's going to erase all the all the parameters from the URL. So like if you're on listings, just go right back to the main page. So just like that, I'm going to reload and we should see it up here. So we do. Uh, it's kind of like pushed to the side. So I'm going to try to style it a little bit more. I think what I'll do is I'll put another div inside. And I'll say like max width 7XL and MX auto. So it should position itself a little bit away from the edges. Let's reload. All right, so that's a little bit better. It pushes it into the center. And then we can also add a background around the whole nav. Actually, let's take a look at the Airbnb site just to get some inspiration because I want to make it as similar as possible. So it looks like the navbar up here. It's actually like not really too obvious, I guess, as you say, like compared to some other sites, it's actually a little bit, they have like this rounded thing going on that looks kind of cool. And then it just like slides down into this, but this is basically the navbar. It's like this giant white section with HRs. So that's fine. I guess we can do that too. Uh, but what we should do is we want to push it, position this middle section in the center. I'm just going to do flex item center. And then see, it'll push it down a little bit. And I guess what we can do at the bottom is we can do a border B and then a border gray 100. That should give us that line effect like they have over here. See, that kind of works. We have that line effect. But if we want to make it stay while we scroll, which right now we can't even test that out because we don't have any really pages that you can scroll. I guess this show page you can. And see how the nav bar stays at the top. So if we want it to move while we scroll, we have to add absolute top zero, or you could do fixed, which means it'll also, it'll like stay up at the top when it can, but then when you do scroll, it'll come with you. So it does kind of work. Uh, one thing is we can see this link behind. So I think we should just add a background on the nav bar. So just BG white, and then hopefully it'll It'll cover up that link once we scroll over it. All right, nice. We have this simple nav bar. We might want to implement something like, you know, their logo. We could work on getting a logo up there, but for right now, we can try adding a color so it looks a little bit more like that. Home. And then it definitely looks like there's a font bold on that text. Make it a little bit thicker. And then really, we can say Airbnb, but whatever the name of your app is, you'd probably put right there. You know, and we'll also notice that this link's a little bit more off to the side. See, like our listings is kind of offset, so I do want to make it fit. And to make that work, uh, we basically want to make sure that our styling right here on this main class matches up to the styling on our navbar. And right now they don't because we're using max with 7xl so i could try using that container class instead and see if that doesn't like mess up anything okay so that's kind of fine we might just want to do some padding it looks like there's px5 so we're gonna want to add that to so container and then px5 see what that looks like now it does kind of match up to the to that right there okay this looks good we have our Airbnb text there. Also, obviously the font is a little bit different, but their font looks pretty basic at the same time. And we could add that in if we want to get to that. I think real quickly, I want to add a cool icon. So I'll go to flaticon.com and then let's just look up like house or something, you know, even be this, but I want a more animated, cool one that matches the theme that we're going for. So maybe like this one is kind of red, but too circular. Let's keep going. <laughs> I 
I want something like nice and bright. All right, I think I liked uh, this one could be good or this one. I think I like this one a little bit more. Let's grab this one. And then while we're at it, we can also set the favicon up in the top left corner like on the tab because see how Airbnb has their icon right there. But for us, we just have like, it would either be not set or just use like the last one that you had for some reason. So what we're going to need is two different sizes. We're going to need one for the nav and then one for the top bar. So for the nav, we can go with 64 pixels. And then let's just work on, let's add this in first. So to add in an image to our app, we can put it in the assets images folder. That's a good place to put it because then you can easily reference it from your Rails app. Okay, so now that we have it downloaded, we're gonna take it right here, take the icon, drag it in. And then I'm actually gonna rename it to new uh, okay, logo nav. And then we can render that right next to the Airbnb text. So to do this, we're actually gonna change this from having the text just displayed in the link to, we're gonna put it in a block. That means I'm going to add do to the end of the link and then it ends. That way we can put the content that we want inside of this and organize it a little bit better. Then I'll wrap this text in a span. That's like the usual convention for doing things like this. And then put the image right here. So we're going to do an image tag for logo dash nav dot png. Reload and then let's go back in here and see what that looks like. All right, so the logo is obviously way too big. I, I think I picked one that was too big. Uh, so we can resize it or we might just want to pick like a new image. So if I give it a width and object cover, it will resize down a little bit. Oh, well, that's still kind of too big. Let's try with eight. All right, and then also let's make this be flex. So I think we can add flex to the link. We can see flex item center gap four. That should do what we want. Maybe even gap two. And then we could go ahead and make the text a little bit larger. So to do that, we could even do it on this main link. We just say text Excel. Make it a little bit bigger. You know, I guess that's fine. Although since like the house kind of sits down, I feel like it might look better if the text is sitting on the bottom too. So to do that, instead of having item center right here, we do item end. We can push everything down to the bottom. Although still, it looks like the Airbnb is kind of centered for some reason. That is interesting. Let's add a background on the link, just so we can see what's going on. BG Pink 500. There's just like a little bit of padding on the text for some reason. Which I don't understand, because this span should really be... It shouldn't affect that. Let me try to delete that class. Or let me try to just have flex with nothing else and see what happens. Yeah, weirdly, it's still putting the text up at the top when I want it to be like down. Try adding M, like margin top auto on the text. Sometimes that helps, but uh, that's weird. I can't get it to like sit at the bottom. <laughs> well, honestly, I don't even know if that would look better. I was just trying to experiment. This this actually doesn't look too bad right here. Just something like this Airbnb. Okay. That's fine for like the first start. Right, so we got the home link set up. Now on the other side, I would put the sign up, or like sign in. So we can have, first we can have a link to sign in. This would go to new user session path. Now let's reload, take a look at that. So it's popping up right here. So if we want to position them to the other side, we have to add some styling this container right here so this div where we had the container class we're going to do flex justify between and item center just to push them and make sure that they're all aligned in the center so that looks pretty good we have the sign in link and then we could think about how we want to style this 
big BG. Maybe we'll just do a shadow large. Rounded full. <clears throat> Bought semi bolt. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Add some padding. Alright. Maybe I didn't want rounded full. I wanted like rounded large. Even maybe a border. Alright, so we have sign in. With the shadow, it looks like so 3D, like it's gonna pop off the page. Which might be cool if you're going for that vibe, but I think I just want a more simple sign in. Okay, that looks cool. Sign in, and then right next to it, I'm just gonna copy this. And then I'll say create account. And then instead of new user session, it's gonna be new user registration. That's kind of important. And then as far as the background, I'm gonna change this up. So I'm gonna make the sign in, the sign up or create account button just be more like bright. What we can do is we can add, let me move this to a new line. It's getting kind of congested. Let's do a BG gradient to right. And then it's gonna go from Indigo 500 to Pink 500. I love doing these gradients because it just kind of like makes it all bright like that. And then also we can change the text color to be like a pink, a really light pink or something. I don't know. And you'll notice that the sign gets pushed in the center. That's because with justify between, it tries to like space out all of our elements. So since we have three links here, it's going to space them out evenly. So what we have to do is we have to wrap these last two links in their own container. That's as simple as just putting a div around them. And then this should just push them on their own over here. Although we do lose this, the gap in like the item center. So we might want to put our own gap in here. So on this div we can do like gap four. Or you could have just added a margin on one of these links. Whatever you are feeling like. All right, so this looks good. Sign in, create account. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's say we go to create our account. I'm just gonna put in some, you know, random information. We only have two fields, like the email and everything. So like now we create an account, but we still show these links up and we still show like the sign in, create account link. So I wanna go and change that. So right here inside of this container, we can just say if not current user, if the user isn't signed in, uh, we'll show these links to sign in. But if they aren't, if they are signed in already, we won't show them just like that. We don't show it. So we could actually have an else condition and we can display any links we want to show when the user is signed in. So I think I want to show like a little drop down menu and then we can put, like, we can just show that the user is signed in. So let's go to font awesome. Let's find like a user icon. Just since we're using font awesome already, I feel like let's take advantage of it. So we have just the simple user person kind of face thing. We can drop that in here, reload, and then we see this up in the corner. So that kind of shows like that's your profile or something. And I'll do some styling on the div outside. So I'm going to make it have a border, rounded full, and some padding. If we check that out, it'll look like this. Although the padding on the left, the padding on the side seems a little bit off. So I think we want to do uh, like more padding on the side. So we could do PY2, PX3. Just like that now we kind of have like almost a perfect circle we could try to increase it a little bit more like px 3.5 there we go and now that looks like a perfect circle we could have also instead of doing padding we could just do like a fixed height and width height 10 with 10 simply but then the icon gets kind of pushed out of the way so actually i think i want to do height 12 and then we could just do flex item center 
this define center to put that icon right in the middle. That kind of gets the same effect, but then we can guarantee it's an absolute circle. All right, so that looks pretty good. We have this user a little pop up over there. And then when you click on that, we should have a nice drop down pop out. So to do a drop down, it's actually pretty easy with Rails and with stimulus, really. So what I'll do is I'm going to just add a div around our link. That's kind of like the drop down button. And then let's put a class relative. And then we can start building out the drop down. So for the drop down, we just have another div inside of here. And because of the class relative, we can put it absolute on this div. And it won't go like relative kind of scopes it to only be like affecting that one element. So if we did do absolute, it would just pop up on top of that button. So let's give this a fixed height and width. And I'll also just let's change up the background a little bit so we can see it. Okay, so yeah, we get this like absolute position block right up there. We definitely want to move it around a little bit. So let's try left zero. I think it already might be left zero. Okay, let's try negative left 24. So we're trying to push it over a little bit. There we go. Also, this element's pretty big. Let's change it to width 40. All right, there we go. And then instead of top zero, let's try like top 16. Because if you remember, our nav bar is 16's width. So if we could do top 16, it'll just push it down. So that should be right at the bottom of the nav bar, just like that. Although there could be a little bit of like less space. So we could try top 14. Now it looks about perfect, but we could probably do a little bit more to get it closer to that icon. So let's try top 12. All right. I mean, yeah, it's not bad. And I want to move it over a little bit more to the left. So let's increase from left 24 to left 32. All right. And I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good drop down. Yeah. It could be styled a little bit more, but that's fine. Let's try to make it rounded. So let's do a rounded large. And I think we're still gonna have like a BG white, but I can add a border too. All right, so now the drop down looks kind of like this. Right now we can't like click it to toggle it. So I want to add that in. For that, we're just gonna need a little bit of JavaScript Let's generate a stimulus controller. You can do that by going to console, type in Rails G stimulus, drop down. Now we have a stimulus controller. And what I'll do is I'll add the stimulus controller on its div by typing data controller equals drop down. Then on the toggle button, we can have a data action. And because it's just a div, we need to specify the event which would be the click event. And then we'd say drop down toggle, just like this, like pound sign toggle to signify that we want to call the toggle method on the drop down stimulus controller. And then we're going to need a target to say like the menu. So I'm going to add that target right here. I type in data drop down target equals menu. All right, so now we know that this element is the menu. And then let's go and set up the JavaScript. So I'll go to app JavaScript controllers, drop down controller. And then inside of here, we're just gonna need to set a few things. So we're gonna have that toggle method. And we're gonna get event. Let's just prevent the default just in case a user, or just in case we put this drop down controller on a link instead of just a div. I wanna prevent the default event. And then we can just say it's not menu target, but class list toggle hidden hidden is the class that i'm using because that's a class in tailwind and then we also need to define the targets up at the top of the class so static targets equals menu menu just one of the targets and then we're allowed to do something like this and right away you'll see that now we're able to toggle this drop down just like this and this is pretty nice although i would like there to be some sort of like fade in effect 
which I've seen, like I've seen people do fade in effects for these, like a pop-up kind of effect. Also when we're clicking, notice over here, like uh, we can kind of select the listing. So what I'll do is let's change that div. It's because we're in a div. So when you click on a div, it thinks you're trying to select text. Let's just change this to a link. So actually we can just change it from a div to an A. And then we can do an href equals just like pound sign. So that's just an empty href. Now it looks like it still works fine, but now we don't see any text getting selected. So I like that. And we also get the nice cursor effect. I think I like this. Maybe I'll move down the move the drop down over because it's a little bit too far now, I'm noticing. So to do that, let's go over to this drop down, which is right here. Change it from left 32. Maybe back to left 24. <laughs> you know what? That's fine, right? Like this. Okay, cool. And then also we want to make it so it starts off hidden. So to do that, we just add the hidden class onto this drop down right so now we can click on the drop down it pops up pretty nicely and then we can put any type of links inside that we want to have so we could start off with like a link to settings and this could go to the edit user registration path right away we have a settings link because this is built in with device so if you wanted to edit like your email your password that's really all you can edit here but if you wanted to add more fields in, you could obviously do that too. And then we can put also a link to sign out. This will go to destroy user session path. And, and really all we need to do also is set a data turbo method. The reason being is that this needs to make a delete request. So we're gonna change it from the normal get request that a link would make to use a custom request, which you're gonna use delete, which will make it a sign of the account. And also you'll notice that these links are, like they need to be styled a little bit nicer. So we could just do that on this div if we wanted to, or we can make a second div inside of it. I think I'll just do it up here. I'll say flex, flex call item center. It will center these links kind of like this. We could also put gap for we can do padding two. Let's see what that looks like. So now we have like the settings link, sign out. And if you want to style this more, you can obviously do that. But this is looking pretty good to me. So we added a nice nav bar, sign in links. We have user accounts. But now I want to make this more. I want to make this more featured. So first of all, we don't have any way or like a user to create a new listing. Oh, real quick, I'm gonna add one more thing in the JavaScript. So you'll notice when we have the dropdown open and we click anywhere else on the page, yeah, the dropdown doesn't close. So that's pretty important. We're gonna quickly add that in. So to do that, we're just gonna have another event. We can do this right on the main element. Do data action equals click at window. We're gonna go to dropdown close unless drop down that's going to be a method we're going to make so over here in the drop down controller we're going to create that close unless drop down and we're going to pass in the event because then we can check if this dot element contains e dot target and we're actually going to say if not this element contains it which means is that click did you click on something outside of the drop down and if you did we're going to just basically run this dot toggle although this could have some unexpected effects because look oh actually yeah actually it's not even working let me check console all right so right off the bat we get cannot read properties of undefined oh because i'm calling this dot toggle but we're not passing in e okay yeah we don't want to call this dot toggle anyways because this is going to have some unexpected effects Let's console log click. And right now you'll see like, look, we're getting the click for every time, which means it would just be toggling the drop down. So actually we want to check for another thing. So if the target is not inside the drop down and 
this dot menu target last list contains hidden so actually this is going to be another not so if it doesn't if we're not in the drop down and also the target doesn't contain hidden then we're going to just simply add hidden so instead of toggling let's just add hidden and if you see what that looks like now we click on it we click off and it just hides it but it doesn't toggle it if like it doesn't do any toggling or any weird stuff even if we click like a thousand times this is pretty nice and that's just the simple thing i wanted to fix as far as like a transition to make this fade in i haven't really handled that but i think i know how we could so what we could do for a transition is first of all on this element we can add transition all duration 250 this would set up transitions but we still don't see anything you know so to do that transition we'd go into the drop down controller i think what we do is we toggle hidden but then we'd have to set like the opacity to zero maybe like zero percent then do set timeout and set it to 100% so now like it's visible again but then make this like a 250 delay let's just see if that works uh, I can't really show let's do a hundred millisecond delay I mean it seems like a little bit of a transition right Although it kind of just seems slow. <laughs> seems like a little bit of a lag. Um, maybe do a 50 second delay. Also only works for like... Toggle it I think. Or does it work for both? Yeah, since we're hiding it, like it, it automatically... Do that. So we might want to check... We might want to check here, like if dot menu target last list contains hidden. We would do some special code. Otherwise, if it doesn't, we're going to do this loading. So then we could say on the otherwise, we're going to remove hidden. But then if it, if it, wait, if this menu. If it contains, so this is if it is hidden. So we're gonna wanna do this code here. So we're gonna remove hidden, then we're gonna do the load in. Otherwise, we're gonna kinda wanna do a load out animation. And then we could just add back the class. So I think we do style opacity equals 0%. I think that's actually fine. And then we would add hidden right here and then we can reset the opacity now i don't know how that's gonna look let's test it out i'm not really sure maybe do a hundred millisecond delay i mean a little something a little bit of an animation could also try to make it like move up a little bit although it's gonna be kind of tricky to do that anyways I feel like that's fine I don't really care about the animation part too much and we could get into that we could spend like a lot of time on animations which I don't really want to do because now that we have this drop down and we have a user account too like we have a user signed in let's first get to the part where they're allowed to create a new listing because right now you could create a new listing pretty easily because there's this huge button like create new listing but i would think we want to get more information about this owner before they can create the listing so we might want to add another link on the nav bar or something actually what we'll do is we'll, let's move the new listing link up here into the nav bar real quick so to do that 
we can go to the listings index page and then let's just take that new listing link copy it out go over to the layouts navbar and then we'll put it up there inside of the navbar so right inside of this top level let's do it in the else so this is when a user is signed in we'll have the link to new listing let's take a look what that looks like so now we have this new listing button up here now let's also style it up so it looks better i think what i'll do is i'll take the styling from the create account link because i like that bright pink styling and then let's just replace this styling from the new listing link then let's reload uh oh it does look a little bit off uh wait what did i do look to new listing yeah it's like weirdly it is a little bit off Flex. Let's add item center to this flex. Because we're probably always going to want our stuff to be in the center. Okay, so now it looks a little bit better. We have the new listing button. And I'll probably just, instead of rounded large, I'll do rounded full on this. So right here on the new listing, change rounded large to rounded full. There we go. We have new listing. You can come here. But what I want to do actually is when you get to new listing, if you don't have information needed or whatever it's gonna show you like do you want to sign up to become like a owner or like a lister because right now we don't even have anything any setup like that but i want to create it okay so how are we going to tell if a user is able to create a listing right well first of all i think they're going to want to have more information about them so I don't think we're going to have this here. Like we have settings, which is just like user settings. But I think we should have more than that. Like we should have the profile settings and stuff like that. So I guess we can start off by adding some more fields to the database. Let's go into the console and let's do a migration. Let's do migration, add profile fields users and the profile fields we're going to add is like first name last name uh we are going to add a description but i think i'm going to do that later because it's going to be rich text so we don't really need that in the migration first name last name what else could uh like maybe like a profile picture but also we don't need to add that in the migration Maybe kind of like the address, but we don't really care about their personal address, although we might want to. So adding address fields is actually pretty easy. We could do like address one, address two, because you know how there's usually like the, the main address and then like an apartment or something. And we could have city, state, even country. These would still all be strings, so we just leave it like that. Now we have like a bunch of fields to fill out for a user. Oh, and maybe zip code. All right, let's run it. I'm gonna take a quick look at this migration by doing a cat on the migration. You see we're adding all these different columns to the database. That looks good for me. Now let's just migrate the database with RailsDB migrate. So now we have our new fields. Now, if I restart the server in dev, we can go back here and we don't really have any like option to see that, but I think maybe in the settings, I'll kind of like hide this away. I'll do a different, I'll do a whole settings page actually, because this, the edit user, this is more like the, the settings that you kind of hide behind like a, like the password wall, which right now we're doing it like all in one, which the UI on this just kind of looks weird, but that's what device gives you out of the box. So let's just go ahead and create a whole new settings page. To do that, it's pretty easy. Let's start in the routes. So let's go over to config routes.rb and I'll create the routes for a settings page. So let's add, I think I'll do a resource settings only new, or actually only 
show and create. So we have our settings page with the show page and then also a create action. Then we'll also create a controller. So up in the app controllers folder, we'll add the settings controller. And inside of there, we'll have the settings controller class that inherits from the application controller. Then we're gonna have a show action and also a create action. So right now there's no content in them. So a cool thing about Ruby is you can now do one-liner uh, methods since like Ruby 3. So you can just add a semicolon and then end. It looks kind of weird, maybe if you're a beginner. So if you don't want to do that, you can just have your your old school method just like this. That's empty and we're going to put content into it. You can have both. So we have that show, we have to create. And then what we'll do is <clears throat> inside the navbar for our link to settings, instead of going to edit user registration path, we can just simply go to settings path. Now, right now we're not gonna have a template for that, but that won't cause an error or anything. If you reload, we still see our settings link. When we click it, then we get settings controller is missing a template. So we have to quickly add a template. You can do that by going to the views folder, create a new folder called settings, and then create a file called show.html.erb. Inside of here is where you'd add your settings stuff. So what we can do is just start off with form with URL settings path and add a block with the form. So now we have a form that's going to the settings path, which will hit the create action in the controller. And that's where when we like save the stuff on the user. And now let's start adding those fields. So let's do a label for the first name f dot text field first name. These are going to be really bad siloed, by the way, because I'm not doing that first. Let's do last name, X fields. Then we have maybe like address one, address two. We can do state. City. I think I'm actually doing this a little bit wrong. City should be first. Then state, then country. Then zip code. Now we're gonna have all these fields in the form. Let's reload. Oh, <laughs> that looks horrendous. Okay, so that's what you get when you don't style anything. I guess let's just uh, start off by adding a div around these. Flex, flex call, gap four. At least they're all gonna be on new lines and spaced out. Now we'll just end off that div. Boom, now we get something like this. This looks, ooh, this looks pretty bad. Okay, so I guess let's wrap this form in a div. Do max width 7XL, width full. Next auto. I just want to center it in the middle. Okay, wow. And now <laughs> we get this this sort of look. Okay, wow. There's so much here. We're gonna need to definitely refactor this. Maybe we'll do a max with 5XL, make it a little bit smaller. And obviously the fields don't have to be that large. That's crazy. So inside of here, we can probably do like Max width 2XL. I don't even know. Another MX auto. So maybe we don't even need the outside layer. Something like this. And then let's just remove the gap. We're actually going to want to put styling around each of these fields. So I guess I should have done this first. We can just have the flex, flex call. Uh, I guess the gap could be fine if we if we wrap each of these in a div. We've done that first. Now I have to hit each of these. Let's get started with the first name. So we can style this a little bit nicer. And then we'll probably just reuse the styling to make all the links look the same. We can start like rounded large. That sort of look. And then I think 
We could have like first name, last name side by side. So to do that, let's leave these as like call for these, but then we're gonna put another div around these that are gonna do class. We could do flex, I think I'm gonna do grid, and then it calls two. I have two columns for the first name, last name. And we can also make that last name have rounded. So now we get something that looks like this. I, I wanna put a little bit of space, so let's add gap on the grid, gap four. All right, now we get something like this, first name, last name, address one. We're also gonna to wanna to have a container around that. We can add flex, flex call. We can add some rounded on that address field. You see, there's just a little bit too much space with the gap. <laughs> so instead we wanna just base out the links but then we don't need like space between the label and the field. All right, and city, state, country, I think it'd almost be like three of them on one line, or at least city, state, and zip code could all be on one line. And then country could be like the last one. I'm gonna move zip code up a little bit above country. And then let's do this. Flex, flex, call, rounded. And we're gonna need a wrapping div around these, and we're gonna do grid calls three. It's kind of annoying to do all this styling, but you gotta do what you gotta do to to make these beautiful apps. Rounded, large. All right. Add the rounded large class. Boom. Okay, already we've condensed this so much, so much. Okay, another thing actually is address one could probably be like three quarters of the way, and address two could be a small one because that's usually just like the apartment number. So let's do that. So we're gonna add another container here, and. We can do grid, grid calls three, but then we just need to make it so that the address one takes up uh, two of them. That's one way to do it. So to do that, I don't really remember, is it? Uh, let's see. Set calls with. Columns just like simply as that. So we just say columns two if I wanted to take up two columns. Although it didn't really work. No, I don't think that's right. That must be different. Let's go look at grid. Grid container, yeah. But then I want to set like my own amount of uh, width. <laughs> Forget how to do that. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Because usually there's a way to say like self. Is it called span? Utilities for controlling how elements are sized and placed. Okay, perfect here. It look like 
Number four has that call span two, which makes it take up two of them. That's what I was looking for. So I'm gonna put that right here on address one. Call span two, so it takes up two of the grid elements or two of the grid spaces, you know. And then we'll also put gap on this top level grid. I know it's kind of annoying, but boom, now we have a nice kind of look like this. This looks pretty clean. We were able to condense it from that huge, huge form into something a little bit more easier. All right, and then the last one that we have to do is the country. So let's wrap this in a div. Now we have this country, we can put a class on here. And obviously it doesn't need to be that big either. So why don't we just take that grid calls three and we'll wrap it around here. Or actually what we can do is we can just drop this inside and it'll already be positioned over to the next line. Interestingly enough, because it only allows for three anyways. So that's a pretty easy way to do it. So just like that, it automatically pushes it over, squishes it. And then the last thing we can do is have like the submit button at the bottom. So we can just put that right here f.submit now default submit is going to be really like ugly let's put some text like update profile information be like p2 rounded large eg i don't even know maybe like a gradient Um, 500 to red 600, text red 100. Yeah, that's not bad. And then last thing is to set cursor pointer, which kind of like makes it do a click kind of effect. And then when you click this, we would expect it to update the profile. Right now it is going to that controller action, but we don't have any code in here. So what we do is we just say current user dot update user params. And then we would define that in a private method. We just write private and then create a new method called user params. The reason why we're doing a user params is so we can permit the parameters that we want. We're gonna say params dot require user actually we're not going to get that user uh, key unless we specify it on the form so in the show action since we're doing a form with url we never actually specified the model to use so we could either just don't require the user we would just permit those attributes which i'm fine with that just permit first name, last name, address one, address two, zip code, city, date, country. All right, so these are the all of the attributes that we want to let the user update, which means that they can't update anything else about their model if they tried to hack the page or something. And in the create action, we could say if current user update with the params, we can just redirect to the root path. Then we'll add a notice, like your information successfully updated. Else, let's render show, which should just like render that page again. It should keep all of the information on our form just in case there was an error. Let's go ahead, click. And we did get this, your information was successfully updated. So I guess it did work, even though we didn't put any information. Let's go back here and try to set the information. So let's, who is this guy? He's like, DHH, Rails man. <laughs> and then my address is like eight Main Street, apartment something. Austin, Texas, and country USA, which actually like 
there's not even states and city. Like, there's some things to realize about this. Maybe we don't even need the country field, but let's just put it anyways. Just like that, we have our information saved. Now, if I go back to settings, oh, it doesn't automatically fill. That's annoying. So I think the reason being is on this show page, we should set the model. If a model is current user, so then it would be able to remember this information. Like, see, now it fills it out. But this will change up the or this will change up the form a little bit. Another thing is that since we have a model that's already saved, it's gonna try to make a patch request. So when we the next time we go to update, it says it's not gonna work. See? And if we go in the console, we'll see there's there's a routing error because it's trying to do a patch request. Uh, the way to fix this is to just set the method it's gonna use. So just simply set method to post. Boom, now it works. But another thing is those parameters didn't get permitted now that there's like an extra key. So if we look in the console, there's unpermitted parameters user because now all of those keys are names based in this user object. So that's why you put the require. Let's go back in the settings controller and we have to actually say require user and then permit the attributes. So just like that, if I want to change, maybe we're not eight main street but it's 108 update profile go back to settings and everything's working as expected this is cool we have their profile information and then also on this page we might want to link to like change the email settings and password so we can do that at the bottom outside of the form i think let's just have another div And we can have like a H3 additional settings. And we just have a link to change email slash password. And this will go to the edit user registration path. Now let's reload. It's a little bit too close, so let's definitely add some margin on this div. Margin top eight, maybe like margin top 20 something. Push it down a little bit. And then even we can add the line by doing an HR, which will add like a vertical line, although that looks kind of weird. So maybe we'll just add the line as a border on this element. So we can say border TD2, border gray 100. Okay, now we have a little bit of a line that separates these two things. And I think I like that. Although this link could be a little bit bigger. Do like rounded on this, adding to add a break between these. All right. And then also let's add border gray two, border gray 100. So we can actually see the border. Oh. Oh, I said border gray two. <laughs> And then border two. These classes can be kind of like funny to remember sometimes. You can even do like a BG gray 100 to change the backgrounds. All right, now we have something like this. Okay, that's fine. We have additional settings, change the email and password. And even the back button still works here. That's cool. And then if they wanted to cancel their account too. Cool. Okay, first name, last name. The other things that we could add is like the profile picture and the description. So to do that, what we're going to do is, first of all, go into the model. So let's close all of these. Let's go to the app models user to RB. And then we're gonna set up uh, the active storage and rich text attachment. So we can say has rich text area and then maybe it's just like about me and then it has one attached profile picture now if you remember we already set up action text and active storage in the other video oh, it looks like that methods are on has rich text area it's actually just has rich text okay that's not bad so let's Fix that, has rich text about me, has one attached profile picture. But if you remember, we already added 
rich text and active storage in a previous episode because we had the description and we had the images. Right, so this is actually pretty easy to go and add it into our app because we already have those tables. So we just add these two little things into our model. And then now we can go and update the form. So inside of this settings form, let's just go after this create a column for all of like the city information. Let's do another one, another set of links. I'll just add flex flex call to space them out. And let's put an f dot label about me, and then an f dot rich text area about me. And I don't even think that's gonna apply. So let's take a look at this, and this actually looks pretty good to me. The about me section, and then we might just want to add the profile picture as like another one. So profile picture and it's actually going to be a file field now profile picture like this and then if i was to set about me like i love traveling building cool apps and having fun and we set our profile picture to some like random picture that i have actually this isn't going to save unless we go and update the controller so let me quickly go and update inside of the user params, because since we haven't permitted about me and profile picture, they wouldn't save, but I really want those to save. So let's add in about me profile picture. And if this is getting too long, you can always put it down on a new line. All right, and now let's update the information and it should have actually updated it. Like we see that this section did update. The profile picture isn't uh, showing because it's just like a simple file field, but we could show a representation of it real quick on the show page. So to do that, right underneath here, we can just say if, like if, really we can do it off the current user. So if current user dot profile picture attached, and then I'll do a one liner actually. I'll do image tag current user profile picture. And we're only going to show that if it's attached. Then we can do a quick class with 10 height 10 object cover, rounded full. Take a look at what that looks like. Actually, oh, look, I'm missing the equal sign to display on the page. There we go. Yep, and now we have a little representation. Might want to make that a little bit bigger with 16. There we go. So we do have the profile picture and then maybe I'll have it so that it's like on the side. So to do that, add an outer div, flex gap four. And then we'll put that image tag right here which will only show if we actually have one attached. Okay, that looks pretty good actually to me. And then if you did want to change your profile picture, just as easy as doing this, you have your new profile picture. And I think a cool thing we could do is we could show that profile picture up at, in our dropdown. So like if they have one attached, we can just replace that icon with the image. So to do that, we can go over to the nav bar partial that we created over in the layouts folder. And then let's go right here to this link where we have the icon and then we can just do a condition if current user profile picture attached then we'll do an image tag the current user profile picture now let's just do width full height full because the link already has a height and width defined so we'll just try to fill that then we'll do an object cover that it'll stretch the image so it doesn't look like distorted. It doesn't stretch the image, it crops the image and zooms into the center, but it tries to fit as like the best that it can. Now let's reload and, well, we actually see that like the image is a square, <laughs> which doesn't seem right, but it's because an image will automatically try to like, just go its full 
width, even though we have rounded full on the top element. So what we have to do is you have to say overflow hidden, just to make it so that, uh, you know, the image can't extend over. And then look at this, this looks pretty good. We have this image right here. Yeah, this is awesome. We have the profile information and new listing still is like, there's no logic here. So I think what I want to do is we're going to add in Stripe. And I guess to create a new listing, you're going to have to have a Stripe account set up to be like an owner, basically. And I think that's how we'll do it. So right now we are just showing this new listing page. We might as well have another page, which is like set up owner or like sign up as an owner. So what I'll do is I'll go to routes and let's create a new resource. We'll call it like owner sign up. Let's do only show. This is gonna expect a whole controller for owner sign up. Create that right now. Owner sign up controller. We'll create a class called owner sign up controller, inherits from application controller, and then it has a show action. Just like this. Now we're also gonna need a matching template. So over here in the views, we're gonna create a folder called owner sign up. And then a new file called show.html.erb. And then inside of here, we would get started on that screen. Simply we might start with like flex call, item center. Actually, we don't even need this. Let's just get started with, actually, I do wanna have that. <laughs> It's just I can't see it yet. So let's do an H1 and I'll say like sign up as an owner to start listing houses. Something like this. All right, so now when you click new listing, instead of going here, like you should only see this if you have the owner set up. So we wanna actually redirect them to this owner sign up page. So to do that pretty easily, we can just go into the controllers and the listings controller. And then inside of here, I think let's have a before action. Uh, redirect to sign up. And then we're gonna also do it only. I'm just gonna try to copy that, like the code that we have here to permit these actions. So the percent i just means it's gonna take this and turn it into an array of strings. So we could also just do that if it's easier. Cause this is what Rails is expecting. But they have these little like helpers for advanced developers, I guess, apparently. So let's do only new. Um, create. So just in case they tried to hack it and like go to the create, you know, we're not gonna let them. And then these other Actions, we're gonna do some authorization, but later on. Yeah, like we don't want them to be able to just delete any listing that they want. So we don't have anything set up right now. They could, right now they could update any listing, but let's just handle new create, redirect to sign up. And then inside of private, we have def redirect to sign up. I'm just gonna simply redirect to owner sign up path. Just as simple as that. And then let's look at what happens. So if we go to create a new listing, we actually got uninitialized constant owner signups controller. Oh, right, because it's looking for a plural controller. But because I did a singular, see, like I called it owner signup. Uh, let's go to the routes RB and I'm gonna fix that. So by default, every resource is gonna look for a plural, even though I defined singular. So to make it use the singular controller, we have to manually set the controller like this to owner sign up and we go reload and this is what we see so sign up as an owner to start listing houses this is our message that we would display now if we go back to that page i'm just gonna style this up a little bit nicer add a text 5xl oh that's way too big a text 2xl text center and let's also add width full on this div because it looks like the the item center wasn't working. Okay, sign up as an owner to start listing houses. And then we might have like a P tag underneath. It's large. 
we could describe more about our offering, I guess. Wait, list unlimited houses and start making passive income from your properties. This is like what we're trying to sell to the owners of the houses and stuff. And then maybe we'll have a nice image underneath. Let's go to Unsplash. Unsplash is a great website for getting free to use images. The only thing you have to do is credit the author, which let's be real, how many of us are actually doing that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so let's go in here. This is the image from my first video. I feel like people liked it, so let's use this. Although I still have it downloaded. Let's bring it into our assets images folder. So from downloads, we're going to take this over here. Let's rename this to fancy house. I mean, it's not like too fancy, but it looks, it has a pool. It has this, this would cost probably like a million dollars in my mind. It's crazy. It should only cost like 200 K, right? All right. Now let's do an image tag, fancy house dot JPEG. And let's give it a set. Height, I think 96 object cover. So 96 should be big enough. Let's take a look, reload. All right, I mean, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. So we have this, maybe we can add some spacing between these links. So I'll use margin for that. I'll say margin top four and then on the image, maybe like margin top eight, something like this. And then we can even add some rounded on the image rounded large. So now it looks a little bit more like nice fancy website. And then I think we could have our like any further link to action. Maybe we'll put it over the image. But from here, we're going to probably set up Stripe. I think to be an owner, you have to have your Stripe account set up, which means you can get paid out. We haven't done anything with Stripe. So that's what we're going to get into now.